Seven o'clock. Can everyone mute themselves and unmute the when you're ready to talk because there's a lot of background noise. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Lee Chong. I'm the chair of the community board and I'll make introductions. I see um, our my other colleague on the housing committee. Um, you want to introduce yourself? Julie? Hi, my name is Julie Reyes with Community Board 8 Housing. Good evening. Good evening. And that's the uh, committee as it stands right now. And I see some board members on with the board members of uh, Community Board A like to introduce themselves, please? Dan, Ed. Dan Patternack, hello everybody. Ed Green, Chair of Public Safety Committee. Hello everyone. And I think that's it for community board members. And I believe, uh, tell me if I'm incorrect, everyone else here is from Amalgamated. Who is not from Amalgamated? Yes. Yeah, uh, where are you and who are you and what, where are you from? Uh, my name's Eric Ross and I'm uh, not, not representing Amalgamated, but I live uh, in Amal Amalgamated Building 6. Oh, that's what I meant. I, everyone here is from Amalgamated, they're residents of it. I didn't mean that they were representing. I apologize for um, not being more clear, but I assume everyone here lives in Amalgamated houses. Is there anyone here that does not live in Amalgamated other than the board members and one board member who does? Oh, okay. Uh, reservoir. Eric I'm from the Reservoir. Who's the person from Reservoir? Who said that? Uh, excuse me? Who said uh, they were from Reservoir? Yes, I, I did. Who did. Can you introduce yourself, please? And it's Nelson Rodriguez, 9C Building 4. Nelson Rodriguez? 9C Building 4. Okay, Reservoir. Yeah, Lee, Lee, it's Amalgamated Park Reservoir. That's park right, I, wrote, I wrote Park Reservoir, I know that. Okay, all right, no problem. Just wanted to clarify, thank okay. you. Okay, and okay, so I think, um, could everyone mute themselves if they have it? And we're going to start the meeting off. I'm going to start off with my report, which is very short and sweet. We're going to finalize our budget for this coming year. I thank Julie Reyes, my co-partner in this, and she will finalize that. And it will be, it has been submitted, but it will be revised. And I want to make an announcement. Next month, there will not be a meeting because the person that I had invited to talk about housing issues has said that because the uh, state budget has eliminated anything to do with housing budget. They're reconvening and trying to figure out what next step is to handle the lack of housing as a priority with the state. So that's it. And next thing that we're gonna do, Julie and I are going to approve the January and March minutes. Do I hear a motion from you, Julie? I have a motion to approve the January and March 2023 minutes. And I second that motion since we're the only two members here. The minutes passed. Thank you. And now we're going to go on to what everyone is here for local law 152 and local 197. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you speak louder? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> All right, there was somebody on mute. I just muted them. You okay, be thank you. Um, as you know, Amalgamate is here because of what happened. Um, Kevin, do you want to talk about your meeting that transpired? Well, I can, and there's other board members here also from Amalgamated Board. I see Ed Yeager and I see uh, Loretta. Um, I don't correct. I don't know. If, I can't see everybody here. I have Ed Yeager. I have Loretta Ryan. Is um, anybody else? Uh, Jack Spiegel is also. Robert Scott. Um, and I think I would like to pass that over to Robert Scott because he pretty much led the meeting and I would okay. like him to tell you everything about our meeting. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I missed the very first thing you're talking about. This is and therefore it's- Yes, so, 
So um, to talk about our, our movement, what we're doing, Amalgamated Cooperators United, is that, is that what you're asking us here about? What transpired at your meeting? At yes, your yes. Okay. <clears throat> well, it was the, the, the meeting that we had was, was sparked by the expectation that we're going to have our gas uh, shut off for, for nearly half, for more than half of our, of our community as a result of local law 152 and uh, other financial crises that, that altogether have, have brought us very close to the brink of bankruptcy. And, and the, the difficulty that we find ourselves is that we're kind of between two uh, irresistible forces. On one hand, homes and community renewal has really failed to quickly respond to our needs to enable us to get uh, you know, things like carrying charge increases or to borrow money at decent, at, at reasonable points when interest rates were low and uh, basically has starved us of the funds that we need to go forward. And then we are hit from the other side by a series of, of local laws, local city laws that um, are well-intentioned but have not really thought entirely about the, the consequences uh, for co-ops like our own, which do not have gigantic reserves to do things. And particularly if we're starved of money by the state, uh, it puts us in a very, very awkward position uh, to deal with that. And so people were concerned, they came out, we're trying to reach out to public officials, uh, to, we're putting together a petition to the governor to ask her to, to intervene to help. But I think at the other end of the candle, we would also like to see what the city can do to maybe think about the, the consequences of these of these laws, because we're also suffering a great deal from the uh, from the FISP program. We, we're having to keep scaffolds up because of really un, un, very inexplicable nitpicking uh, inspections that were done of buildings on a building we spent about $2 million fixing up the facade of, and we have to keep the, the scaffolds up for another year because we have no money to fix it. And so we're, we're in very bad shape. And, those things have all motivated people to try to reach out and get help wherever they can. And we're very pleased to see that the community board is, is helping us at the, at the city end to take care of things. But we also hope that you will become more aware of the, the problems that we as a state supervised agency are getting from the state. And we have, a, we have a growing group, we're calling ourselves Amalgamated Cooperators United. And we're trying to mobilize the the forces of the cooperative to, to stand alongside the board and management to, to reach out um, on both fronts to see what we can do. Okay, uh, Kevin, you have your hand up. Yes, Lee, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Um, when I came to your last community board meeting, um, we spoke of maybe putting together a resolution from community board eight to the city council. I don't know, asking for an extension, doing something to help us. Oh, can I give you an update? Yep. Okay, one of the things that um, I wanna announce is that your our city council member, Eric Dinowitz. That city, city, this, city, uh, city our or city state? Council, no, our city uh, council, Eric Dinowitz, uh, the son. Uh -huh. Write this down. On May 16th, around six or 6.30, the date hasn't been, the time hasn't been finalized. The community board and Eric Dinowitz are co-sponsoring a forum on local law 97 and 152. And it's gonna be similar to the one I discussed last month, Good. remember, where Ooh, they yep. had DOB representatives and an organization called NYC Accelerator. And they're gonna discuss the ways it's impacting you as a co-op and how they're gonna help you because one of the things I found out when I went to the forum that a Manhattan council member gave where these two agencies were present was there are different types of buildings and based on that, they're gonna be impacted differently, but they haven't finalized it. And you fall into a category of limited equity co-ops, which has just like NYCHA and Houses of Workshire, they're in different categories. So they will, get a different form of what they need to do. So don't be over anxious. Also, NYC Accelerator will help you with the financing. So if you need to have someone lobby with you or for you with the state, 
they will help you. Now, I think you all need to go to this forum when it's, it's gonna be on Zoom, just like this one. And you can ask questions and you will get answers because the one I attended, which was held in the daytime at like 11 o'clock in the morning, over a hundred people attended from the Upper West Side. And by the way, one of the things, uh, Robert, maybe you might want to get involved since you're a limited call and you're quasi Mitchell Lama, you might want to get involved with an organization called Cooperators United for Mitchell Lama. Uh -huh. you thank for you. ML. Are you familiar with them? No, I'm not. So thank oh, you. you should get, okay. I'm actually a, a member of it and I don't even live in a Mitchell Lama, but I'm a Mitchell Lama advocate. Uh -huh. So I know all about them. Um, I could actually give you the contact and you can email the person who. That would be wonderful. Okay. Um, Lee, thank you for all of that, Lee. But I know for one thing, we're not a Mitchell Lama. I know. Well, yeah. You're, you're, you're similar to Penn South, that you were built no. before. You were built before Mitchell Lama existed, and you're a limited equity co op. So you fall under DHCR supervision. Uh, which supervises the Mitchell Amas, the state Mitchell Amas. This H HBD supervises the city Mitchell Amas. Right. See, you learn something, Kevin. <laughs> oh, I'm always willing to learn. I always like to remain teachable. Okay, so <laughs> let me give you... Uh, but I think you'll get a lot more out of Ed Yeager when he speaks next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> You're welcome. Let me give you the person's name. Her name is Adele. Niederman, N-I-E-D-E-R-M-A-N, and she lives in a Mitchell Her Our email is A-N-I-E-D-E-R-M-A-N at AOL.com. And you can mention that I gave her, I gave you her information and she can yell at me if I did it wrong. I shouldn't have done that. But yeah. ask her what their organization is doing because they're just as impacted as you are. And they all have limited income as well. And I think that you all fall into a secondary category. You're not like the record market rate, just like rent regulated buildings also are in a different category than a market rate building. All right. So, so having said that, I think who else wants to talk about their building? Oh, Ed, you have your hand up. I just have a really quick question, Lee. So you mentioned the May 16th um, forum that Eric Dinowitz is going to be hosting. And is the there... community board is co-sponsoring co it. Okay, is that gonna be to address both local law 97 and 152 or is it just specifically focused on it's one? It's only on 97, I believe, but here's the thing. I think the reason why you're stuck on 152 is your development should have been doing 152 three years ago because it was passed in 2016. So what happened is your 152 came up against 97 and 152 said you had to do an inspection of the pipes in the building, the gas lines. And if they were not up to code, they had to be replaced. Right. Um, I'm, I'm very familiar. I'm more, I'm actually more concerned with local law 97, but we'll, right. we'll, well get into that. Thing. Thing. You don't need to replace the pipes at this juncture because you have to go electric. So it's 97. That's the thing, because they want you to go electric and everyone has to have electric stoves. That's correct. That's the problem. So that's the know. issue you're, ha you're really dealing with. 152 is truly ironically on the back burner. <laughs> Agreed. All right. So that, does that make sense for you, Ed? Yes, it has. Yes, it does. Okay, Ed. Jager. Excuse me, excuse yeah. me, Lee. Yeah. Before you go on, Luke has his hand up. Who? Luke. Oh, Luke. I'm sorry, I didn't see. Hey, no worries. I'm just letting you know that I'm about to bounce off, but we still have people uh, in the waiting room. So if there's somebody else <clears throat> from your committee that could uh, help with letting people in, that'd be great. Oh, Julie. Yes, I've been letting some in. There's a lot of uh, participants, so we're very fortunate. I'll Lee, I can, Lee and, yeah, I can help as well if you guys need another co-host to, to go through. 
Oh, I appreciate that. Julie, you and Dan can coordinate. Got it. All right. Uh, bye, everybody. Thanks. Good night. Thank you, Luke. <clears throat> so, Dan, would you like to Yeah. Um, I don't see the connection between 152 and 97. I'm very familiar with 97. I served on a working group with the advisory board. So I know 97, we are not exempt, but amalgamated as an extension as you know, being similar to Mitchell-Lamas until 2034, okay. even though we are good in terms of our emissions until at least 2030, and we'll be good until 2034 with the work we're planning. The problem we have with Local Law 152 is not related to Local Law 97, not at all. Um, our consideration of electric stoves is based on a cost factor and a health factor. If you look at the um, all the health reports that have come out about cooking with gas, that's one of our considerations, but it's not a determined issue. We will consider how much will it cost to replumb our buildings? How long will it take? How much would it cost to get electric stoves or induction stoves? How long would it take? That's where we will have to make a decision. But the whole thing comes down to the fact that we have a deadline based on 152, which, forgive my cynicism, <clears throat> but I consider it milking the cash cow before it's taken away. Because 10 years, 20 years from now, gas is not going to be an issue. It's just not going to be used in New York. So it's create jobs for Con Ed, for the plumbers, for everyone else. Our buildings have been standing, some of them, for 95 years. Are there issues with gas? Yes. B buildings that have gas leaks have been shut down periodically. Explosions have taken place where people try to do illegal hookups and tap in from another line and connect to their line. Those are the unsafe conditions. But we don't currently have an unsafe condition, which is why Kevin suggested if we could get an extension on 152, because right now we don't even have money to deal with any situation. HCR prevented us from taking a new mortgage that would allow us to do a repair or whatever. And had we gotten the money when we started telling HCR about this problem, we started telling them five years ago, we wanted to borrow three years ago, we would have had the money and we would have fixed the gas because we wouldn't have even known about the induction stoves. So that's why we're in this situation. We'd be very happy if we could have an extension until we can at least complete a new mortgage and look at plans to do either a gas repair or a purchase of induction stove. But it's 152. We don't have any issue with 97. Well, the issue is both really because it's a cost issue for you. And but that has nothing to do with 97. How 97 are you pay for 97? is emissions. Um, okay, Ed, your issue is unique to amalgamated. And I think that needs to be discussed when DOB and Accelerator are at the forum because they can explain to you. No. Why can't I they know be the professional? As well as DOB or Accelerator. Trust okay, me. Ed, I, I, then, then maybe you should take over the meeting. Because buddy, you, you seem meeting. to know I'm everything gonna... about everything and yet okay. you're, you, you're, what you're saying is nothing is gonna happen because then no one is gonna do anything. And they're not going to do what you want them to do. I'm trying to explain that 97 and 152 are not connected. They are connected. They are connected. You just don't want to see the linkage. 
152 was passed in 2016 to upgrade the gas lines in people's buildings. And then in 2019, they passed 97 to say convert all buildings to electric. What that is not what 97 said. All right. What does one does 97 say? 97 said reduce emissions. Gas no, electric conversion to through conversion to electric. Uh, no. All right. I'm sorry, Ed. I don't feel well, so I don't really want to have this discussion. Okay. You're I I'll keep quiet. Right, because there are a lot of people on this call. James. James. You're on. Hello. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, okay. Sorry, I uh, step on. Step on. Go ahead, sir. Hi. I, I know this is uh, a meeting of the community board, so it's our entire uh, community, not just amalgamated. So um, just to so I'm a cooperator here at Amalgamator. I've lived here 22 years. I've been on the board for three years. I've been involved in the administration and uh, uh, running of this place. I'm fairly, fairly, fairly not as familiar as Ed with our finances and operations and the local laws and all that. So um, just uh, full disclosure, I'm an advocate. Uh, I agree with Ed and everyone else that this is a circumstantial. The main cause of this has been HCR, uh, fecklessness, irresponsibility, dereliction of duty, whatever else you want to call. And I've been an advocate of taking a more aggressive stance on them even to the extent of suing them legally, which we should always hold in advance. <laughs> Having said that, uh, that's not the purpose of this, and this is not realistic to right now. Well, we have to be practical here. We can split hairs in arguing about local law 97 and 50, 152 and how it relates and what the technical aspect. What we need is an extension. We have to be practical. What uh, Kevin Johns is proposing is we look in this we need to get a variance till we work out these things. By the way, I agree with it, uh, that these things are not necessarily related. I don't disagree with uh, Lee, <coughs> Ms. Ms. Chong, but uh, we need to get a variance while we sort this out in a practical manner. I think uh, Kevin Johnson, who's also on our board, has experience as a building engineer. What do we do? We need to buy time by we need to buy time six to 12 months preferably 12 months while we sort all these complexities out and the practicalities out and the political intrigues and find a way to give us time so we don't have to be uh under the gun here on july 1st and not you're going to have 821 families here which we're talking about four or five thousand people in our community not being able to feed themselves not being able to wash their clothes Yes, they can wash it, but they can't dry it. Well, that's the same as not washing it. We need to get a variance. We need to just put our splitting in the hairs and political things and get some practical, just get a political, just get a variance or extension on six to 12 months so we can sort this out, work out the differences in philosophical and practical. get the financing that we need. I'm saying that I don't, I'm not an expert saying how to do that. But we need to, that is to me our thrust here, because if we're going to just argo and splitting hairs, we're not going to get anywhere. And people are going to be. James, let me ask you, I'm sorry to interrupt. Let me ask you a question. Yes, go ahead. Is July 1st, is this a end all be all deadline date? And who, who determined July 1st? Let me ask you, do you live here? Not an amalgamated. Okay, then, okay, okay. The then, the que then the question for you, it's not. For us, it is. It is existential. Do you understand? Who set the date? The HCR and city law. The HCR by default and letting this happen and by city law, which we all advocate, we all know it's important. So let me ask That's you, a good point. where is the management company? You are, you're not self-managed. You have a manager. Yes, we are self-managed. And you have a manager who- Yes, we do have a manager. I thought you knew about us. I'm sorry, That's okay. No. I know what I'm mean sorry, I'm sorry, I'm still talking to Lee. Let, let us finish our conversation. Go ahead, Lee. Yes, we all self-manage and we have a manager. 
and the manager for the last five years, I, I'm sorry, I know you're just jumping in here. The last five years has brought this up and so has the board to all the political players and the HCR and all the city services. And yes, we have gone, we've gone through all the steps and gone through all the channels and followed all the rules. And yet here we are. So okay, what are you have to who, who at HCR have you been working with or dealing with? Uh, okay. Mohammed, Mohammed Siddiqui and uh, Ruth Ann Visnauskas, of all people. If you're familiar with this, um, Ed Jaker, Ed I know Jaker, Ruth. I know Ruth. Can I, know I Ruth finish? Ben. I'm asking you a question. Please, please let me finish. You asked me who's been involved in this. Ed Yaker, he went to Albany on March 1st, spoke before the Senate Housing Committee to the HCR. So, yes, he is leading the charge um, from our board, and our manager also has. Does that answer your question? Yes. All right. you, so what is the purpose of your question? What do you want? Why, what do you I want? I just to like to know who the players are and why July first, because I am not that. Okay, familiar okay, with okay. Because okay, 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 James, let me tell you my history of your building. A you. month ago, Ed Green informed us about the meeting. He informed our board chair and myself, and we met with Ed, and that was the first I heard about what was going on at Amalgamated. Okay. So. I may be playing catch up, so okay. hard to see if I ask stupid questions. No, that's but okay. No question is stupid that is not asked. I, I, I'm not objecting oh, yeah. to okay. I'm not objecting to a question. I may <laughs> so myself. let's continue because there are a lot of people on this. We have almost 90 people. Uh, Robert, you have a question. Okay, okay, but I want to say the last thing. We need a practical extension of this of six to twelve months so we well, can let me ask you, you just said you Ed yeah, you went to all of the and talked no. to I know. What Next do you think year. the community board are, is going to do that you no. guys who are impacted yeah. went to your state legislators, went to the Senate and talked to the players, went to HCR? Are you okay, not okay. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Last thing, are, are you are you trying to help us solve this problem for people not being able to cook or wash their clothes in the, in the next six weeks? Or, or are you just trying to advocate for the city politics? Which are you yeah. trying to do? I just Neither. answered that question. I'm trying to Wrong. inform you of what you can do and not do. Yes. I, I'm talking about you're not the only building in Community Board 8 that's impacted by this. And I, 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 I understand know there are other that. people who may be on the line. Okay, so what we can and cannot do is we need an extension so we have time to solve this problem. I understand yes, I that. That's what and I'm you saying. You know what? On May 16th, when the politician, Eric Dinowitz, I, as the community board chair and the community board, have been putting the screws to him to hold a forum and bring the professionals in to have this kind of meeting so that you can ask the people that are causing and, this. And a great job he's done. And I am totally impressed by he's going to bat for us and he's doing his job. So now we need to do our job. And whoever the powers that be that you may know need to do internally bureaucratically give us an extension so we can solve this that's all all right thank you Lee, you have your hands up i know uh robert yes um i just to clarify you were asking about about that date we had we had the mandated inspection at the end of december uh the plumber said that we had problems we had and we have we're given by the law six months no, to fix it no, we have no right. money to fix them and therefore it's going to be closed off Act, contributing to the need for the need for uh uh an extension i mean one issue that's that's occurred to me is there seems to be a false equivalence in the notion of the law here the okay. idea that we had problems with our gas lines that need to be fixed but it's being treated as the kind of thing that con ed would discover where the gas is leaking and there has to be an immediate shutdown and i think I think to some extent there's I don't see any indication that that's what's happening but because we cannot fix our problem within 6 months we have to request that our gas be shut off and and so we want to try to persuade the city that that's that's All perhaps right, that's not a sensible issue. way that's another issue in addition to the extension you want to make sure that they don't turn off the gas and you also want to expedite getting funding to pay for the yeah. yes yes, yes. See? Simple conversation, get an answer. Kevin. Hi. Thank you, Lee. I just want to say what Bob just said is true. But this is my problem. We have a certified plumber that 
comes and inspects and tells you inside your building that your gas lines have discrepancies. There's different levels of discrepancies. Like Bob mentioned, when I worked for Con Edison, if you found 0.0.1% inside a building, that was cause for immediate shutdown, okay? <clears throat> that is not the case. What the plumber no, is seeing is discrepancies. And who fixes that discrepancy? And this is my quarry. The certified plumber fixes that discrepancy, okay? And that's why I always go back to Roscoe and the bed bugs. Remember Roscoe the dog? If, Bob, yeah. if Roscoe barks, you got bed bugs, right? Bark, Roscoe, bark. All right. And that's that's the way I see it. Okay. And the problem is the amount of pressure that goes through your gas line in a building to your stove might be five pounds, maybe. Okay. But in order to check it and pressure test it, you have to put 15 times the amount of pressure on that pipe. And you'd have to pull every stove out and put caps on the pipe in order to test it. My question to you, Lee, is I know you've told me that three years ago, you had your building done. And I believe back then, Con Edison, there is a way to run a bypass inside the building. It's through bottled gas. You bring bottled gas in, when I did it and I put an apartment building on bypass, my arm went in a bag with a valve, the bag filled up with gas, I put the valve on, no gas was released, the, the flow of gas was not interrupted. Con Edison, being Con Edison, does not want to be held liable. Because if you're doing that, and this happened when I was doing this 20 years ago, a guy fell off the ladder that was putting the valve in and they lost the building because the gas all came out and then Con Edison was responsible for repiping that whole building because it was on them. And that's why they're not doing that anymore, okay? So you just can't replace one line at a time. I don't know, unless it's possible, but the problem is our buildings are old. We don't have the money to do that right now. We don't even have the money to go out and buy hot plates for people if they shut their gas off. Because once again, the HCR has put us in a corner where they did not approve mortgages that we needed to get to address all our capital work. Kevin, okay. Can I, can I ask a question about HCR not approving your mortgage? What reason do they give? And if someone else who's on the board give for not approving your mortgage? Their, their reasoning is after we had architects and engineer reports right. handed to them, they said it wasn't good enough that they wanted a, a, some kind of um, extra big physical needs assessment that would have cost us $240,000 to do that we didn't have. And they wanted, and with the pandemic going on, they wouldn't even give us an operating budget hearing to raise our carrying charges. So for three years, when we need a carrying charge increase, Lee, we go to the HCR, we say, we need a carrying charge increase. Right. We've got to pay our bills. Electric went up, water went up, sewer went up. <coughs> they say to us, give us a budget two years in advance. Who does that? Coca-Cola doesn't do that. Give your budget two years in advance. You don't know what the price of anything's going to be in two years. Look at the price of energy now. It's through the roof. And that's what the HCR requires. And that's why we're after the HCR. But we are here, Lee, because you are the community board. You are community board eight. We are city residents that are overlooked by a state bureaucracy that has no clue what the local laws are. We have to tell them what the local laws are. Uh -huh. Believe it or not, I'm on the board a long time and I know, yes, we have a manager, Charles Abedix. I don't know why Charles isn't here tonight. Blame me. I didn't get the information to him. But if Charles was sitting here, he can document, document every single email for the last now alone five years with HCR and how they have just shoved us under the rug. Because I'm going to tell you what I think about the HCR. They're no, not no, interested. No, don't, don't go no, there. They're not I, interested. I, they're not I, interested in. I'm familiar with the HCR. But they're not interested in properties that they're managing that already exist. They want to build new houses. I understand. All right. Another, Please, you have Judy. Judy. You have Judy on the line waiting. Judy. 
Um, hi, um, Ms. Chong, thank you so much for, um, for meeting with us. As you see, a lot of us are very concerned. I'm not on the board. I've lived in Amalgamated for many years and got much more involved when we heard about this gas shut off. And um, many of us are learning about all the nuances that have been going on. Um, I think that what we're looking for here is, um, well, what we're, what we're concerned about is here, we have this unfunded mandate to fix the gas lines. And I know that other, other populations have suffered. I know the grant houses where I lived once in Manhattan um, have been without gas from January and maybe it'll come back on in July. I think these unfunded mandates discriminate against middle income and lower income populations whether they have homes or cooperatives. Um, and I, I, I really do appreciate you mentioning that group in Michelama. We do need allies. And I think that many of us are here today because we're hoping that the community board through whatever power you have, I know that a lot of these government agencies don't have an incredible amount of power, but this is also a moral and ethical question. And I think what we're hoping is that we can apply pressure uh, because there's so many of us that are going to suffer as a result of this. And we are in Newark, a naturally occurring retirement community. And many of our residents can't be going out and buying food and going, getting takeout. They're really dependent on the kinds of implements that they have to cook. In addition to the fact that um, I, I agree with what people are saying about HCR, I think they failed in their mission. And um, many of us feel that, you know, this is an attempt to gentrify this area and ultimately um, privatize and get market rates for this very valuable land we live on. So we're really looking for Community Board 8 in, in all of its ability to have influence and power and do whatever it can do. Um, and also other political leaders, other organizations, allies we can find to fight this broader fight about the gas issue together and the broader fight about limited equity cooperatives or Michelama cooperatives to stay as a as a as a miracle for people who came from other areas and needed a safe place to live, uh, which we think are in jeopardy. jeopardy. So, I agree with you 100. percent I I think that's why you need to connect with other organizations that are in the exact similar predicament as you. And the com community co cooperators united for Michelama is that organization. They are made up of Michelama co-ops citywide. Some of them are well off, so a lot of them are not well off, and they're good, they're all in the similar. They also have to go through the local law 152 and local law 97. So that's why, and they're doing it as a one big organization made up of maybe a hundred different developments of varying sizes. So that's why you need to connect with them and see what they're doing, so you don't replicate yourself. Right, right. But, you know, and you said Penn South is also involved, or they already have. I don't know what Penn South is up to because Penn South is similar to you. Limited equity cooperative, yeah. Yeah, right. They were built before Mitchell Amos were ever created in the right. like you guys in the 1920s. So, uh, but they were involved in Mitchell Amos. So, um, uh, so does it matter that HPD governs the city? Uh, Mitchell, no, no, they're, they're, that's not the issue. A CU for ML is made up of Mitchell Amos. With, that are supervised by the city and the state. It's an umbrella organization of Mitchell Amis throughout the entire city, small ones and new ones. And they're only co-ops. There's another organization that deals with Mitchell Amis co-ops and rentals, but I didn't want to let you guys get involved in that one because you're all co-ops. Um, the other thing is last month I gave some phone numbers and maybe I should repeat the number again because if it's financing is an issue, NYC Accelerator, there, a guy who came and spoke at the forum, and I assume they're gonna speak at the one on May 16th that assembly member, I mean, uh, city council member Dinowitz is gonna hold, uh, will speak. Um, his name is um, Andrew, I don't have a last, Andrew Chintz, C-H-I-N-T-Z. And the number, and they, they will identify financial incentive programs and financing through their, their through, an, uh, through their, an entity called PACE, P-A-C-E. The number to call for information is 212-656-9202. They will help you do an energy audit. They will help you get a mortgage lender, do a mortgage lender consult. 
So, you know, that you should call them and see, maybe you could get some information prior to the May 16th meeting and maybe be prepared to ask more in-depth questions. All right, Naomi, you've been patient. Thank you. Naomi Ross. Naomi. All right, I'm going to go to James. Uh, Ali, uh, first of all, I want to apologize for being uh, a bit aggressive there. I apologize. I understand that you're um, you're a member of community. I don't know exactly what your position is. I'm the chair of the housing committee. That's all. Chair of housing. And I just said I also just got appointed. So go. So oh, okay. I'm totally new no, to that, I, that's all right. And and housing committee of what? A community board eight. Oh, okay. All right. And um, and I understand. Um, that you probably have like hundreds of probably thousands of properties with similar problems that you and you're just taking us on out so it's understandable that there's a lot of problems that have been building up the last five years um so the reason i posited and i was so vehement about what i wanted to say was we just need to have an extension whatever way i understand, I understand. however that yeah. happens that did you have in your power, you work your magic through the powers that be. I don't have any magic. And I don't have any power to do that. You know, it's, it's just a very, no, I can no, give you information. I, I, I didn't ask you, I didn't say if you have power, just whatever influence you have, whatever you have, what, what is, we need to buy time to I know, I know. implement I the practical this. complex solutions that Ed Yaker is proposing, and that Kevin Johns is practically on the board. We just need to buy time. That's what we need to do. <clears throat> So whatever you can do to help us and do that, please do. Thank you. I'm trying to give you information of people. You know, I, 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 I saw that and we've been pursuing these things to no avail. They go like, OK, we'll get to this is coming in six weeks. And you uh, call the accelerator. Uh, we haven't called accelerator. I was the only them. number I gave and the only oh, email okay. I gave. Okay, I didn't no, know other to... information because I didn't know any. No, no, and that's good. So this accelerator, can they help us get us a $150 million refinancing mortgage with a 3.25, uh, 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 not I an I don't know what they can give you in specifics, but they they said that they will do a mortgage lender consult. At, at what interest rate? I don't know. Okay, then. then You're then, asking they, very specific questions. I, I, I agree, I, I agree. Well, it, it gets I back not, to my I, point. Let me I, tell you this. I was on this forum, not asking questions, but listening. Okay, no, I, I got it. Okay, listen, we thank you. We'll, we, we will follow up with that. I'm sure Ed Yaker and everyone else will, and I certainly want to give them a call. The point of it is, <coughs> we'll cut to the chase here. We are looking at interest rates now that are more than the principal because of the increase. So if someone can give us an interest rate that is back to what it was 3.25, then certainly we're interested. If they're not, then they're basically useless. So yes, we will call. No, 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 but keep that in mind. Thank All you. All right, um, Jack. Yes. Please leave Naomi. Naomi's. I think I mean, oh, Naomi. If you're not going to speak, please mute yourself. Naomi, are you there? Naomi, she's not there. I don't know. Understand? Jack, go ahead. Okay. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Can everyone hear? Okay. Um, I'd like to mention that uh, Amalgamated, we did look at PACE loans and it wasn't for us. And we already looked at and are way past what Accelerator can do for us. Um, I can't remember all the details, but I do know that we've looked at and accelerator and and not accelerate we didn't actually look at them but i do know that we've had our own consultants and that we are way past um accelerator and that the pace loan just to get a list of places to get loans i don't think we need the pace loan when we looked at it wasn't for us those are the two oh, yeah. Did you like the them again? Uh, th those are the only two things i want to mention at this All right, time thank you Ed. Hello, Lee. Ed? Uh, I, Lee, this is uh, Eric, Eric, Eric wait, wait. Ross. Who? 
Eric Ross for Noemi, my wife. Oh, all right. That's it. No, I, okay. Okay. Uh, so, Lee, there are many things that we can do in years to come, you know, build stronger relationships with other organizations. Uh, we need to do something to deal with HCR. Everybody is aware of that. Uh, but we're in a crunch and we need to do something now. We're, we're subject to a city local law. And I've heard people say we, we need some kind of extension, some kind of way to deal with it. What I haven't heard anybody talk about is what is the real risk? With, with gas and gas inspections. And and uh, maybe, I, I haven't been in part of the board conversations, and so maybe somebody has talked about the real risks involved, but typically, you know, there are some areas that need to be dealt with and maybe need to be dealt with immediately. And and can we somehow get a finer point on things and who All could right. help do that? I, I think Kevin mentioned the risk. It seemed like it may not be a risk at all, right? Kevin. That's that's the question. Right. But here's the other thing. The, the question seems to be, you want an extension on a local law, and a local law is the city of New York. And the agency that is handling this local law is DOB. So DOB is the entity you need to put the screws to to require an extension. Request it. And DOB, from my understanding, will be there. And the person from DOB that came to the one I attended was someone by the name of Ian Graham. And I don't know what his title is, but he talked about the local laws and what it means. So, so Lee, if there's anything you can do to help us position this before that meeting, so we can have a real conversation about a way forward here. What would you like me to do? I don't what, know. What, well, uh, I don't know anybody in DOB. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> just came to the meeting. <laughs> So, so how, how do we influence them? How do we, you know, what? Uh, well, uh, and I think the best way is to call your politician and Eric Dinowitz done. is <laughs> your city council person who deals with the city agencies. And he, that's why he's holding, <coughs> we need where they put the screws to him saying, you have to have a forum. It's gonna impact a lot of your constituents. You need to inform them about Local law 152 and local law 97. Okay, so, so I'm going to go back to one one little statement that I heard early on. Someone asking for uh, uh, some some kind of a uh, an agreement, a forum from the this community board that would support our action going forward. Is there anything you can do to support well, this? I don't know if we can. I think you would have to. Ask, I have to go to, back to the board chair. But I know that my senior center, Riverdale Senior Services has agreed to sign on to a petition to request an extension. And I know I signed on to it because I'm also the chair of uh, the, the uh, Senior Center Social Action Committee. And we had a meeting and there was a big discussion and um, State Assemblyman Jeff Dinowitz was there and he talked about it. And he said that he was at your meeting on Zoom. Is that correct? All right, and did he? Was he honest in saying he gave you some information? Okay, you all have this look on your face, like what took... Ed, go ahead. Did he... Okay. Yeah, Jeff Dinowitz did speak at that meeting, the Amalgamated Cooperatives United held. Uh, let me say a couple of things, not on this. First, to my fellow people from Amalgamated, CB8 does not supervise or have any relationship with HCR. It doesn't help to vent our frustration with HCR to the people of Community Board 8. Thank you, That's Ed. That's out of their belly. Um, We're asking for the top yeah, yeah. Please mute yourself, Doris. Um, someone mentioned Penn South earlier. They're not a Michelama, they're a redevelopment company. They are doing the common area repairs that we would have done had we had money. They have the money, they're gonna try and do it without shutting down before they're inspected. And that's what we would have done if we had money in 2020. Finally, I know Ian Graham, I have very high regard for Ian. He's a great, well, he's brilliant. But I don't know that he has anything to do with Local Law 152. 
he does have to do with, he knows 97 inside and out. So for someone to speak on 97, Ian Graham is fantastic. I don't know if he can help with uh, 152. Here's, here's a question you might want to address to um, the, set of the um, city council member is um, maybe tomorrow I'll send an email to his chief of staff and ask him in the forum, are they also going to be talking about 152 as well as 97? Because I made that assumption and I realize now I shouldn't have. But um, I'm going to make a point of saying that as they didn't think to do it, I'm going to say you need to do it because the issue with amalgamated immediately is the 152 and not the 97. Correct? Yes. All correct. right. I will do that. Thank you. Definitely send an email to um, our chief of staff, his chief of staff, um, James. You're muted, James. Correct. Uh, that is uh, the our, our immediate problem is 152. I just want to reiterate uh, an appeal to you, and I know you, this is a thankless task, and thank you very much. Uh, Brenda, can you close that door, please? Hold on. Sorry. Um, we need to buy time. That's the basic line. Whatever you can do, Lee, with your powers of persuasion, your connections, just buy time so we can sort out these very, very complex issues. We're a very unique situation here, maybe on different than you have. We're the oldest, we're the oldest co-op in the nation. We're the first co-op. It's been a hundred years. So um just uh and, and I, everyone's doing their job. Um, Ed Yaker and, and Kevin Johns, just buy us time so we can sort this out one way or the other. Thank, right. thank you. Thank you. Dan. Hey, Lee, how are you? I just want to clarify just a couple things. You know, the committee, if the committee believes that there are, you know, beneficial points to put forward to the board, you guys could do a resolution. Um, what I'm trying to get and I think I have a grasp on it, but I'd, I'd like a little clarity. Uh, it, it Would Ed be the best person? Would Kevin be the best person for specifics on what's going on at Amalgamated between the two of you or agree maybe? I would say Ed is more, much more qualified than me on any Ed, of these issues. Gotcha. So Ed, just to kind of clarify, we know this local law 97, we know this local law 152. Simply stated, Local Law 97 is dealing with, with a lot of emissions. It's my understanding that equity, limited equity co-ops do have, um, I guess, time to get their act together for Local Law 97, more time than a regular building would. Is, is that correct? That's correct. Yep. Okay. Under Article 321, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 perfect. And, and as Lee said, 152 seems to be the issue, right? Local Law 152, which was passed right. in 2016? Yes. Okay, and I believe under local law of 2016, you guys must do periodic inspections. Mm -hmm. And they must be required, I think every four years, you guys have kind of kicked it down the road, so to speak. We, because of our community board, last year, 2022, mm -hmm. all buildings in CB8 should have been inspected. Mm -hmm. um, they broke it up. They originally were gonna do it all in a short period of time. Then they realized, they didn't have enough plumbers. And when we say that. they, look. the city DOB Correct. originally yep. wanted it all done at one time. Then they realized there weren't enough plumbers to handle it. And they couldn't do it borough by borough because they couldn't get all the workforce mm -hmm. and they couldn't get all the Con Ed crews to do one borough. So they broke it up by community board. And our turn was last year and we got inspected at the end of 2022. And, and at the end of 20, all, yeah, yep. So at the end so, of 20, 2022, you guys did your inspection. Right. And, and what did the inspection reveal? The inspection revealed what are called deficiencies, which is it's not an unsafe condition that has to get shut down, but according to DOB and according to the law 152, you then have six months 
to address the deficiencies. We don't have money to address the deficiencies and we won't have money by June 30th. Therefore, my understanding of the law is that we have to shut down, but DOB doesn't shut us down and Con Ed doesn't. They leave it to us to tell the Correct. public to shut it down. Now, our position is we have a legal liability if we don't tell them to shut it down after six months, um, because the law says we had six months, we didn't cure, we, we're supposed to shut down. And Correct. So you have two things going on, at which point, right. you know, there, there's, you know, gets to a, a couple of the next questions, but DOB, I guess, you know, is informed you have these deficiencies, you must correct. And just to clarify, even if you had money in your hand, say tomorrow, say you had $150 million in your hand tomorrow, it would still take you time to correct the deficiencies, right? I assume so. And is DOB taking the position that if you, if you had immediate funds, they would stay it? Or have they not taken any I, position yet? We haven't had discussions with DOB. They're Understood. In the hands-off position of Here's what the law says, you do your thing. Understood. So um, the, the next question I have just to kind of clarify here. Um, well, actually, let me, let me come back a second for, for that. Lee said it perfectly before, this is a city law because it's a city law, you know, it's gonna be controlled by, you know, a few different folks, the city council, the city council created this law. It was put into effect by the mayor of New York at the time, right? So if that law were to be changed, Right. If there were to be an amendment to that law, it's going to be a city council decision to do so. So one possible solution that you'd be looking for is asking your, your council member to put forward perhaps an amendment. Perhaps that amendment is limited to, say, limited equity co-ops of more than a thousand units in the city of New York, which are probably going to apply to maybe, I don't know, three buildings in the city of New York are of that than, size. There, there are more than a three limited equity Co-ops of more than a thousand. Yes. Oh, yes. Quite okay. A few. I know them. Okay. Okay. So I, I what I would do city. is Dan. Correct. Yeah. Ex excellent. So let's say you pick a number that's not you know daunting for say DOB where the law is being eradicated, or, or I should say for the city council. Uh, I guess what I'm getting at is, is to put something forward that's going to apply to a small mm -hmm. number of buildings of limited equity co-ops. Mm -hmm. That's not a huge change to the mm -hmm. law. Yes. And you ask your council member to put something like that forward. That's one possible solution. The second mm -hmm. thing, and I don't know where your council are right now. Has anybody put forward a stay into the court? Or are you guys looking forward to putting a stay into the court? I don't know a legal basis for a stay into the court. Public health, safety, and welfare, if you're telling me that your folks aren't going to be with gas and that gas is going to affect, say, the public health. Again, just something putting out there, something to think about. And just so I'm, I'm clear, the next part of it, if you guys do choose to shut off gas, is there an alternative right now? Do you guys have you? Is there anything out there just so we know as the community board and the public? Is there an alternative? We or don't what? have an alternative. We had hoped if we had money, not enough money to rebuild our system, but enough mm -hmm. money, we were going to buy single or double burner induction cooktops. We were going to buy, you know poster uh, convection oven air fryers that aren't a, a permanent solution, they'd be a make-do solution, but we don't even have the money for that. Understood. It all comes down to money and we and are time. left in a cash poor position. I think it's expensive to buy these electric only a temporary solution. You know what I mean? That's more money to co-op. Somebody is speaking about the cost of, I guess, the stoves that you're talking about. They're saying it's expensive to do so. That's really it, it's the make do issues are you know yeah. less than a thousand per unit. The full repair and what I said earlier is we will consider the cost of and availability of elect of induction cook stoves and the time it would take to get them and the cost of replumbing because the cost of replumbing when we had to do it replumbing all the risers was more was more than seven thousand dollars per apartment. So if someone's using that to compare to the cost of the induction cooktop stoves we're talking about, that is um, those are only 
six thousand, and with tax benefits, they're under they're four thousand. But it's a it, there is a balancing act in terms of time and money for each alternative for the long term solution. So, in a perfect world, what is your best solution that you're seeking? Let's say you get the time to well, stay. Let's say you get the money month, from in. Yeah. I would say a six month to a one year extension on needing to shut down, during which time I would hope we could complete a mortgage and then have the financial ability to pursue whichever alternative solution is in our best interest. We might need a full year just because of the time it'll take us to close on a new mortgage. So, but what have you figured out what your best solution is yet? in terms of say gas versus these convection ovens. No, and no piping for those. We don't know the time availability of the ovens and without money we haven't gone to the contractor and said how much will it cost and we haven't gotten prices. We don't know if HCR would require us to get competitive bids. So we can't say definitively that we can do gas at this price and this time frame because we don't have the money uh, and if you go to a contractor they give you a proposal that's good for 30 days or 60 days and we're not going to have money within 30 or 60 days understood and, and i guess while we're segueing into the money have, have you guys reached out to agencies have you reached out to say hpd have you reached out to hdc for any funding yeah. options we reached out to hcr which is our supervising agency they say they don't have money. No, uh, so we're, I, we're yeah, the new mortgage. Okay, from private sources, and I guess what I'm yes. asking have you checked the have you checked the public sources yet? For a hundred million dollars, I don't see any public sources having that kind of money. HTC might. Mm -hmm. HTC definitely does. HTC. HTC. HTC definitely has that money. Housing Ooh. Development Corporation. Who? Who? Housing Development Corporation, HDC. I don't know that we've reached out to them. I don't know. Um, and there are some other public, you know, and nonprofits like uh, Consumer Cooperative Bank. And we're, we're familiar with NCB. Right. And also um, M&T Bank does a lot of these types of lending. We're, um, we're, we're working with a broker. Most of those banks are going to sell the loans either Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae. Right. So it doesn't matter whether you got an NCB or someone else. Right. Our current mortgage is through NCB, but they sold it to Fannie Mae. Oh. So you're mm -hmm. really talking about Fannie and Freddie. Right. We're working okay. with CBRE. So let me ask you, Dan, what kind yep. of solution would you like to see? So I guess that's what I was trying to get all of these. I mean, to, to the extent that there was a housing committee, and I think, look, if you're looking for the community board support, to, to create, you know, say, whether it's a stay for DOB to delay the notice, wh whether it's perhaps asking Council Member Dinowitz to put forward an exception to 152. I mean, the community board can put forward a resolution, which is, you know, uh, the committee would put it forward and then it would go to the full board on, on May 9th, I think our meeting is, and the full board yeah. would have the discussion, which again is more attention to your issue, the full board members discussing the topic. And again, kind of reiterating your position, um, to our elected officials and to all of our agencies. Now, you know, DOB is a mayoral agency. It comes underneath the mayor's office. Um, you, again, your elected officials are going to be very helpful here to the extent Councilman Dinowitz and, and Assemblyman Dinowitz. Um, and I think uh, this is, I believe this is Jackson now, right? Jackson has our area yeah, here. Jackson is your. So, yeah, so State Senator Jackson, even uh, again, introducing you. And I know. Uh, look, I know Assemblyman Dinowitz and, and Councilmember Dinowitz definitely are familiar with HDC to the extent that they could see if there's any type of perhaps bond financing that could be used for the preservation of this housing. I think it's certainly worth a conversation. Um, but again, for, for us, Lee, to answer your question, you know, a very simple resolution, you know, be right. resolved that, you know, the you Department off, of I'll Buildings. Talk. Yeah. I'll talk to you offline about get a resolution. I mean, even it. if you put something, yeah, if you want to put something very brief tonight, and then you could always, because I don't, I think this is your last opportunity before the, the full board, That's right? Because there's not going to be a meeting in June. Right. So I don't know how Julie feels about it, but it's an option to kind of put out there. And then, you know, the board can, 
in between now and the board meeting, you know, it, it could All be right. amended. So what kind of, what, what language would you like? So Ed, this is where we get to your perfect world. Mm -hmm. You're asking for support from the community board. What are you asking the community board for? An extension of one year for limited equity co-ops that do not have the funding to address the situation with local law 152. Exactly. And if we were, exactly. we were going to put a, and if we were going to put, say, a base number of units, so that way the council member is not have his hands tied and you know have a big fight. What do you think the appropriate size limited thousand, equity housing building should be? Good. A thousand. A thousand is good. We, you know, you could put fourteen hundred would eliminate <laughs> a few more. But the co-ops you're including are. Yeah. 15, 16, 18, 25. Yeah. There, there are several co-ops much bigger than us. So I, I think the language that we're looking for, Lee, is therefore be it resolved. And we can create whereas as later to make it pretty. Um, but you know, therefore be it resolved that oh, somebody's got their thing on. So therefore be it resolved that I'm sorry, Ed. I think demonstrated that can financial hardship or shortage of funds is something that applies to us that might not apply to other co-ops. Yeah, I think what I'm getting at are two main points here. One, we're looking for an exception to, to 152 for certain limited right. equity co-ops above size, right? An amendment right. to 152. And then more specific, you know, notwithstanding that exception, we're asking the Department of Buildings to stay any type of enforcement or to stay the date by which amalgamated has to comply with, with section 152. So I think those are the two things that we're really looking for. Um, and then third, uh, I think is to, to support any public financing for the preservation of housing to assist the amalgamated. So I think those three points probably get you guys to what your perfect world is that you're seeking for seeking support of. So point one is generic. It's not mentioning amalgamated. Point two is, mm -hmm. and two and three are specific to amalgamated. Yep, you got it, Lee. All right, so two, I forgot, I, I was- Oh, I, I apologize, and, and I was kind of rambling a little bit. So number one applies to number one. any- Yeah, excellent. Okay, so number two is that community board eight urges the Department of Buildings to stay any enforcement of 152 against the amalgamated housing and strongly urges DOB to extend the compliance date for amalgamated housing of 152. I know I'm going faster if you need me to go through it again. No, yeah. you're not going too fast. You're doing perfect. Who said and then, that? James. Someone and you're, you're writing all this down and you're going to present it to the <laughs> Yes, I am. Yes, I am. No, you're yes, not. I am. Yes, uh, I am. Okay, James, go ahead, Dan. Running the meeting, please allow Lee to run the meeting. Would mm -hmm. you like to run the meeting? I, I'll get off the meeting and you can go run it. I'm serious. I'm so fed up because I'm not feeling well. And you all got you guys are all making me crazy because you all want to talk at the same time. And, and you're repeating yourselves and making this worse. So could you so, please just let Dan say to me yeah, what yeah. I have to write so, down and vote on? Oh my God, my mother. No, I got all it. So the leave the, the, all of you. <laughs> so, so leave that second point was just, you know, we're, I, I don't know how much of it you got, um, but it was urging DOB. Community you know, to, eight urges DOB to state any enforcement of amalgamated houses and to extend amalgamated houses what? Compliance date for 152. Oh, compliance. And what was the third one? And number three was, uh, C, um, you know, the housing committee um, urges elected officials to support the public financing for the preservation of amalgamated houses through funding sources from HDC and HPD, and then we can clean it up, you know, 
before the board meeting. Well, that's just a very raw be it resolved. Well, they're not going to do HPD because this is a state, so it would be HCR. Mm -hmm. Understood. <clears throat> oh, and HDC, I think, is the I know HDC, HDC has HDC multifamily. HDC. Yeah, right. I know so, they have a multifamily program. So it would be HDC and HCR. Okay. Mm -hmm. Julie, do you support this? I, I do, but I, I just have a quick question for, for, um, for Dan or, mm -hmm. and yourself. Are there any other buildings within CB8, the limited equity co-ops that may also be subject to this and maybe don't even know to come to us? That would be my only hesitation in just including amalgamated. I would wanna protect all the limited equity buildings within our community board if it applies to them. Yeah. Lee knows better. Lee would know better. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I don't think anyone falls into that category of 1,000 or more in CB8. There are smaller ones, though. They're, yeah, all, yeah. they're smaller ones. And the only ones that are limited equity are Mitchell Lama co ops, you know, like uh, Cannon Heights. And um, I think Orloff is still a Mitchell Lama. And Tibbetts Towers just bought out. They privatized. And, but they're all under 1,000 units. You know, so they wouldn't fit in. But outside the city, you know, outside of CBA in the city, there are. No, I'm talking about just specifically CBA. No, so I don't want, no, I don't want to. This would only be for amalgamated. That's my point. I wouldn't want to exclude a building that it may pertain to um, yeah. if, if they need it. So I think so, say amalgamated yeah. or any other within the community board eight. So Julie, excellent question. And you know, I think Ed alluded to it before, maybe it was Lee who alluded to it instead of doing it by units, because I was looking at a citywide thing. Um, you could put or within CB8 that's experiencing financial hardship. Right. That that I will be open to. Right. This way we we we're take care of amalgamated, but anyone else who may not know to come to us. My only concern is if they were trying to do an amendment to the the local law, it, it, it makes it a little bit easier for the local council member to just get a smaller exception into it. Mm -hmm. In other words, the local council member would do it just actually pertaining to his council to councilmatic district as opposed to making it citywide. Well, the citywide was the 1400, but you know, to, right. to include Julie's concern again, we're kind of like doing this on the fly right now. Um, but it's an excellent question. There are there might be buildings that this applies to within our CB that are experiencing trouble and they just don't even know to contact us. So right. there's a way that you could word it. So we definitely protect amalgamated. Uh, because we we wanted to give the support to them i think to well to how, how about this julie mention amalgamated because they're the only ones that have come to us and then add after it any and all other developments within the confines similar, of that are in similar situations that's good right that's good okay and then we can clean it up we can just Send it around, Dan, to you, Dan and Lee. We'll clean up the word. Yeah, yeah, all board members. Yeah, however you want to do yeah. it, I'm certainly willing to help. Thank you, Dan. Okay. So, do you approve it now? Yes. Okay. So, so be it. I'm going to, this is the draft. I'll clean it up and I will send it to Julie and to Dan. I would, just, not... I would just ask, we have over, we have a great attendance here. And if everyone who attended the meeting also, call and email your city council person with this complaint. They need to be bombarded. Just don't attend this meeting. Please contact your council person and even state assembly. Um, just don't come to this meeting, contact them as well. And they even tell us, you know, what can we do? What can, you know, when we ask, what can we do to get something done? They said, write us, call us. The more people, the more leverage they believe they have because their constituents are concerned about a particular issue. All right. Thank you, Dan. I really appreciate it. Of course. Your help. No, of course. James. You're muted. Dan, thank you for your very uh I'm impressed with your appraisal of our complex situation on the spot. Who are you in relationship to us? I'm just a neighbor and a member of the community board. Your your neighbor, you're not a member of the. Uh, you're not like some official in, in the government or anything else. No, nope, well, just an appointed member of Bronx Community Board Eight. 
uh, uh, we, we, we uh, you and Lee are the guys. We appreciate you coming in. Is, I know you have thousands of the Julie, Julie's, yeah, Julie Julie. The and, and, and Julie and Julie Reyes. That's you, you three, you're the big three. Please give your contact inf information to uh, Ed Yaker and Kevin Johnson Rosas to help us, and, and our manager, Charles Sabatis, to help us work out a, you know, a short-term solution to help us get to a long-term solution. You can get it through the community board office. That's well, well I mean, we, we're here through the community boards. Can you, can we have a little more direct crisis? When you go through that, it takes months. No, it doesn't. We need to, oh, no, okay. The reason uh, you're here is because uh, uh, all right, all right. My, 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 my point is, board. we need to get to you two guys because you have an appraisal of what actually is happening. You seem to have a, what's going on. So no, need you to need to get to the council person. That's what you need to get to. You, you need to direct all this energy to the council people so that they can act. Okay, and if we do that, will you solve our problem before July 1st? <laughs> if I can win the lotto. Kevin, I okay. see you have your hand. Kevin, you have right. your hand up. Oh, we, would uh, like, I, we, would, we would like yeah. telephones, maybe under all the doors of amalgamated telephones, where to Ellie, call. Ellie. Hi. Talking. Hello. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank you, Dan. I want to thank you, Lee. Lee, I hope you feel better. It's not good when you're under the weather when you're trying to run a meeting. Um, <laughs> I wanted, I don't, I hate to play the devil's advocate, but it's what I do best. And with your, um, what you guys were saying you were gonna propose, I was just wondering how many rent regulated buildings within community board eight are suffering the same problem that you might not know about. And Julie, thank you so much also for your insight about the other limited equity uh, that might be involved and not just us, because community board eight is a big community board. But I was wondering, and when I had the meeting with you last month, you mentioned, Lee, you mentioned rent regulated buildings. There are a lot. So, yeah, so I'm just wondering about that also. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. Thank you for a great meeting. And for all my fellow amalgamated cooperators, thank you very much. And if maybe uh, Amalgamated United can get out there and get a hold of the council, council member Dinowitz, like, like our community board members are asking us to do. And we get another letter campaign going to the city council, not just the state. And that's all I, I have. Like, and I, I would like to I would like to see phone numbers so I, we can call wait, left and right. So I, I can give a I can give a phone number now for Councilman Sinowitz. You, can, okay. Okay. you okay. can contact there's two numbers, 718. Oh, slow, slow. 718. Go ahead. 549. Uh-huh. 7300. Okay, that's it. One phone. That's it. And then the Manhattan office, 212. And this is a number you should really call because it's a legislative office. 212 yeah. 788 7080. That's 212 788. 7080. And to save, uh, save our amalgamated houses. We are in dire need of, of exactly. saving. Exactly. Yeah? Okay. Thank you all okay. for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Ed, Ed, oh, Kevin, were you finished? Yes. I was thanking you. That's enough. Thank you. Ed, you had a question? Uh, Ed Green, right? Not... Yeah, Ed Green. Okay. Is there another Ed? But, oh, Ed, I, Ed, I, I, I think there is. There is. But, um, I think this was a really productive meeting tonight. I want to thank everyone. I want to, I especially thank Dan. Um, Dan, that the resolution is brilliant. I think it's right on the money what we need. A um, couple of things that came up during this discussion is, you know, buying time for uh, for financing. So what still hasn't really been resolved is financing for what? We're, uh, you know, as far as I can tell, we're looking at two different uh alternatives one would be induction stoves the other would be rebuilding the gas pipe system and from everything i've seen um it it, it appears to me that this discussion is kind of being steered towards uh the electric option and i guess that has a lot to do with local law 97 and right at the at the onset of this whole discussion robert scott mentioned that the you know what are the consequences of these laws so when it comes to local law 97 
um, you know, it, it was brought up that some, perhaps some type of amendments could be made. I, I, if it was up to me, I'd repeal the law personally, but, but thank you. That's, that's to me. And the, and the, the, the two laws definitely go hand in hand as far as I'm concerned, because local law 152 basically paves the way for local law 97. Um, it, it gets, it puts, building complexes in a position where they have to act and it kind of steers them and forces them towards the electric option in a lot of these cases. Now, I realize, as Ed Yeager said earlier, it's not necessarily, um, it, it's to reduce emissions. It doesn't necessarily mean that things have to go electric, but that seems to be the way things are steered. So when you know when we do have this conversation on May 16th with, uh, with Eric Dinowitz, um, I know he's part of the city council now. He wasn't part of the city council when these laws, well, local law 97 was passed by them, but I'm dead set against local law 97. I want my damn gas stove, sorry. But um, so I, I don't know, to me, that's still an unresolved matter for as far as amalgamated co-op is concerned is what direction. And I understand that like what Ed said before, it probably too early in the game to, um, because there's so many unknowns is to make a, a definite decision. Um, and maybe it might cost more to uh, redo the uh, the gas pipe system, but um, I'm not for the electric option. And, 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 I, and, I, and I really wish that, you know, our amalgamated board would um, not, not I, I realize we, we, we elect you for, to make decisions for us, but on a decision like this, I almost feel there should be some type of, vote between from the cooperatives and not just a unilateral decision by the board because it's a serious matter and if it comes that the board wants uh, uh to go electric and the cooperatives overwhelmingly want to go gas i think that's a problem thank you thank you jack um hold up. okay i had on mute first of all i'd like to really thank um Dan and Lee and Julie, and especially you, Lee, because you were you're under the weather and to handle everybody yelling at you all at once. Um, when will we be able to get a copy or see copies of this resolution? After May 9th, is it, Dan, that we're meeting? Mm -hmm. So after full board. Yeah, the only thing we're required to do is post it on our website the night or the day before the full community board meeting. So that's the okay, first time so the we'll public will see it. Okay, that's my question. Thank you. Uh, Jaeger. Yeah, so two things. First, the discussion of what solution Amalgamated pursues should not be taking up the time of the community board. That's an internal ma Amalgamated matter. You have enough things. I thank you. I appreciate the time you have given. In terms of cooking gas emissions or local law 97 driving us towards gas uh, electric stoves, that's not the case. If you understand the emissions, most of those emissions come from the fuel we use in our power plant to provide heat and hot water. If I know from our budget how much we spend on domestic gas is really small. So by maybe by 2050, gas cooking will be a factor for emissions. Right now, it's a very small part of our total emissions. And all buildings should understand that, that your gas emissions are not what are driving your greenhouse gas emissions for local law 97. Thank you, Ed. Robert, you're muted. Yes. <laughs> um, I just wanted to echo the thanks of other people. And since I kind of have gotten thrust into the role of speaking for Amalgamated Cooperatives United, and I'm just one person on the team, uh, Judy Gonzalez, who will be speaking to you, is also, is also a, a key player there. But I just wanted to say thank you. You've given. We're having a meeting tomorrow night to talk about New directions, and I think you've just given us a very good new direction for our letter writing and calling. Thank, so you. thank you, Judy. 
You're muted. Got you, got you, got you. Thank you. Thanks again. I'm not going to repeat all the thanks. Um, this has really been very helpful. I just, in terms of process, I know that community boards, you have to, the, the committee has to uh, give to the executive committee who then has to present to the membership. Should we try to attend the membership meeting? Don't they have to, do they have to approve? Does the broad meeting have to, uh, you know, support what the, what the executive committee is putting? Do you the think full board, you, at the full board meeting? Yeah, do you think it would be helpful if some of us who are less aggressive could attend, should attend that <laughs> meeting and, um, and, and ask for the support or, or would that be a helpful thing? Do you well, think? Well, the chair will acknowledge whether you can speak or not and okay. she will cut you off. Oh, so we should. No, 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 you can come and speak in support of it. Okay. Do, do, you, do you think that would be helpful? Would She's that be helpful? She's support office to sign up. Yeah, you need to sign up during the, we have a, what they call a public session, the gallery. Right, the gallery. You get to speak before, but you cannot speak during the um, board meeting when the um, board members are um, making conversations themselves. <laughs> so, so, the, so just for understanding process, so the board will vote, the full board will vote on this resolution prior to us being able to speak about it anyway, right? Is that what you're right. saying? We'll, okay. We'll, we'll be voting. So, yeah, go ahead, Dan. Yeah, so Lee, if I can. So our, our next full board meeting is the second Tuesday of May. I, I think it's the 9th. I could be wrong. I think it's May 9th, second Tuesday. So the way our board and Julie, Julie is absolutely right. What we do is we have a gallery session. We allow five people in the, in the public to speak, but you have to sign up beforehand. So if you want to email tomorrow, there's five spots that'll be open. So I'd like to speak and we allow you to speak for three minutes at the full board meeting. What you can also do is send your emails and support to the board office. And you know what generally happens on on popular resolutions is the board office will say we've received, you know, twenty emails in support of this resolution, or we've received twenty emails against this resolution, and that'll be announced to the full board. And any board members would will want we, to read those. But will we get the copy of the account. in time for organizing around it? It sounds like you're only able to give it to us. So yeah. So the the what will happen is this resolution. You know, the executive committee was going to discuss it at their meeting on May. The we meet the Let's, day before. They, what are they there, Julie? Is it still the first Wednesday? No, they, they changed. Or, or, the or they did. Okay. So the, the day before the May, the, you know, the executive committee will speak at that meeting. Will be on Zoom, so the resolution will be public that day. From the last room, please. The executive committee is meeting yeah. the eighth. And I need peppers and I need onion. Okay, Elaine. Might mute yourself, Elaine. Okay, so on May 8th, we'll be able to see a cut because we're going to get people to email you and support. They sort of should know what they're, su yeah. they're supporting. Yeah. Just trying to think of the best way to get this. Um, Absolutely. Know, so we'll take a look at that. Can we email you and um, can people just email? What do we email the general board? Um, well, if you go on our website yeah. on Tuesday morning, it will be on our website. Oh, will be. Oh, yes. Correct it okay. on, on the day of the full board meeting. All resolutions yeah. are oh, on, on main website. Yeah. But in well, the, the meantime, table, yeah. can we have people just email, we support the resolution that will be presented because we kind of know what it is anyway. Would that yeah. be fine? Yeah. And you just email the uh, uh, board office number. Okay, so email the board office number. We support this resolution that will be presented on May 9th. Thank you. And And don't forget to sign up because those gallery spots do go quick. And also, yeah, because you're not the only issue at a full board meeting. Obviously, uh, obviously. multitude of issues before. Sure. Thank you so much. That'll be really helpful. We'll work on this. James. By the way, just a last uh, comment here. If this situation is not resolved, it's going to lead to other things. And if this uh, co-op goes down, which is across the street from Riverdale, it's going to impact Riverdale and their real estate values severely. Just thought I'd throw that in. Thank you. Trying to scare us, are you? No, I'm <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. All right. Are there any other questions? Can I ask that we move on to the next item? Yes. Okay. Thank you all. If you want to stay, we really don't have any any other information. Old business. I don't think we have any old business. Are there any new business, Julie? Um, well, the old business is that we approved the budget. Right, I think I mentioned that in the beginning. Yeah, we approved the budget, that's the only old business. Right. 
and new business. I don't think we have any other than I made an announcement that the May meeting is canceled. And um, that's it. May I have a motion, Julie, to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. At 8.30. Thank you all. And I will, and then tomorrow I will be sending an email to um, Eric Dinowitz asking for the forum to include 152 and say that we're going to be putting in an, a request for an extension for amalgamating. And Thank to, you. And, and also to expect to get a lot of phone calls. Yes. Okay, now the meeting's adjourned. All right. Thank you. Well, good night, everyone. Thank right. you, Lee. Thank you. 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 Thank